After being hyped up at the start of the season, Everton had a disappointing campaign in the end, finishing in 10th, meaning Carlo Ancelotti did decide to walk out the door at the end of the season. I cannot do this any more. I can't do it anymore. And the other day, Everton did announce their controversial appointment of the former Liverpool manager, Rafa Benitez. And to the Everton fans watching, I want you to let me know in the comment section, what are your thoughts on this move? Obviously, he's a great manager, but he spent six years at your local rivals. So yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one. But in this video, we have made Rafa the manager of Everton as we look to get this team some Champions League glory. If you do go on to enjoy this rebuild, make sure you smack a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here. But now let's have a look at the team. So this is what Rafa's got himself into. Not a bad side, we have some really good players with Alan, Cavalouin with Charleston. Also, Dinier is one of the best left backs in the league. We do also have James Rodriguez, who is probably going to leave with Carlo Ancelotti already gone. In this first season, we are going to switch to the 4 4 2 because it's going to take a while for Charleston to convert to a left mid. So, when he does convert, we'll put it back to a 4 2 3 1. But for now, I think a 4 4 2 is the best option. And if we're going to do that, then the wing position is even more of a priority. Also, maybe a new right back. Coleman is 31 and. We don't actually have a backup apart from this John guy. Although we do have a right back out on loan, John Joe Kenny is a good rating and quite young as well, so I might even recall him. So the first player I want to bring in is in that winger position. He has brilliant hair and his name is Mark Kukureya. Isn't the best attacking, but we can work on that and he can also fill in at left back. So there we have it. The young Spaniard is the first signing of this rebuild. We have signed the former Barcelona product for 45 million. There are his best stats. He's an absolute workhorse with 88 stamina. And his best technical attribute is definitely his passing. I'm sure he's going to be a great supplier for Cavalouin. The first player departure is Gilfi Sigerson. He has gone to Monaco for 13.5 mil. We've signed a player who has played for Everton in the past. Nikola Vlasic does arrive from Moscow. I mean, looking at his profile picture, you'd think he's like a 30-year-old bricklayer, but he's actually a really good attacking midfielder with 85 dribbling, 83 sprint speed, 82 acceleration. We are going to play this guy on the wing. However, next season, I might convert him back to a cam if we do change back to a 4-5-1. Also, we do have two gems in the academy. Damianos Harris, uh, 61 rated, really good potential. 18 years old, I'm going to promote this geezer. And then Erland Strand, 56 rated winger, with also some good potential. We've got Hope in this team. That was terrible, I'm sorry. But we have signed Matthew Hope from Schalke for his release clause of 4.8 million. With a two-strike formation, we only have one backup being Josh King. So we've signed a fourth choice centre forward. And that man is the promising American talent from Schalke. Right, two bits of business here. Fabian Delph has left the club to Wolves for 4.3 million. And Damianos Harris, the Greek talent, has left to Gil Vicente for one year. Team looks very solid now with those two additions. Let's see how well we're doing halfway through the season. It's all going as planned so far as Everton are currently in 5th place 21 games in. And I reckon signing those two wingers has made an incredible impact to this team. We have now changed back to a 4-5-1 as Vlasic goes back into that camp position. And Richarlison has successfully converted to a right mid. King is going to be injured for the next 7 weeks so Hope is now the backup striker. But of course we do still have Richarlison who can play there if we need him to. Also Robin Olsen's loan spell has been cut short by Roma so... Now we have Virginia as a backup, which isn't great. 66 rated. We're absolutely screwed if Pickford gets injured. There we go. We've now got a safe pair of hands on the bench. And that man is Marek Rodak, the former Fulham keeper, has joined Besiktas in the save. But now he's joined Everton for 6.2 million. By the way, lads, our youth academy is absolutely stacked. We have even more hope. I need to stop saying that. Anyway, William Hope looks really good. Uh, Billy Perkins has incredible potential. Uh, same with Alfie Bullock. So, yeah, those two are probably the most promising players. Also, Jonathan Warner. Uh, Tommy Meller is 18, so I think I am going to promote him. And then we have Edward Barber. Ironic because he has the most basic trim ever. And Alex Wilson. I promise I haven't cheated, lads. We finish a season... In third place. Everton have finished the first season in third place. Rafa Benitez has done an incredible job here. And despite managing Liverpool in the past, I'm sure he is absolutely adored on the blue side of Merseyside. In the FA Cup, unfortunately, we did lose 2-1 to Arsenal in round five, which is a bit disappointing. And we didn't do well in the Carabao Cup either, losing to Tottenham in round four. So I'm assuming that Rafa was just focusing on the league, and it's worked out. Our top scorer was unsurprisingly Calvert-Lewin with 21 goals, Zero assists though, which is a bit weird. Maybe he was being a bit selfish this season. Then it's new signing Nikola Vlasic with 13. Then Richarlison with 8 goals. Dekure with 6, interestingly. Uh, even more interestingly, Coleman with 3. 
which is the same as our new signing Kukurea. And we were also very solid at the back with Pickford getting 16 clean sheets. So what a first season that was. Third place getting Champions League football for next season. This rebuild could actually not take that long at all. But let's hop into season two to see which players we can attract. Now we have Champions League footy. Look at that for a budget. 150 million. Which areas do I want to improve? Probably the CDM position. Batman has actually requested to loan. And then probably the centre-back position. Yeremina. We do have Godfrey and Holgate, who are pretty much the same rating as him, and of course they're both younger. And since Coleman is 32, we are going to look for a new right back. But don't worry, we won't sell Coleman. I'm going to make sure he's here with us till the very end. I was thinking of selling Kenny, but because he has a five-star weak foot, we're going to convert him to a left back so that Digne has some good competition. We're not messing about, boys. We've made a massive centre-back signing, and that man is Clomon Longley, the former Barcelona centre-back, does join for 42 million with the former Barcelona player, Yerumina, going the other way. And that has improved our defence by a mile. 85 rated, 86 defending, 78 pace. He's the same age as Mina, but five ratings higher. What a deal this was. Our defence has been bolstered even further with the signing of Gonzalo Montiel from Juventus. The Argentinian does arrive for 36 million. As I said, we're going to keep common for this whole rebuild, but Montiel is now starting with 87 pace, 81 physical. He looks like a very solid right back. Two players have left the club, but Beningame has gone to Benevento for just under 2 mil. And Schenk Tosin has now left the club going to Valencia. Well, he was so good for me in my Sunderland series, but with Moyes King returning from loan, Josh King isn't needed anymore, so he has gone to Southampton for 5.5 mil. The streets won't forget how much of a baller this guy was at Crystal Palace. Yannick Balassi has now left to Sassuolo for just under 2 mil as well. We have smashed our record transfer fee with this signing. Listen, when you have a budget like ours, you have to spend it well. And I think we have done this window. Two great defenders. And to top it off, we've signed one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders in the world. We're only in Season 2, and we've already transformed Everton into an incredible side. What a job Raph has done so far. And if we finish third last season, with these improvements, we could even go on to win the league and go very far in Europe. So now, let's see if we're living up to those expectations halfway through the season. Nah, what is this? What is this? They want us to win the league title and the FA Cup. And not only that... They also want us to reach the final of the Champions League. This is like the first time in years that Everton have been in the Champions League. And they want us to reach the final in our first season back. That is just absurd by the board. And yeah, in the Premier League, we've not done as well as the board hoped us to. Currently fifth, 21 games in. I mean, we are 11 points off top spot, so it's not impossible. But I can't see it happening this season. You're not the guy in charge. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. But as for the Champions League, we've done really well so far, getting 15 points in the group stage and finishing above Atletico de Madrid. So into the round of 16 in the Champions League, we do face Borussia Mönchengladbach, which you could say is a favourable draw, but we cannot underestimate this slot. They have some good players. Zachariah, of course. I think that's Nicola Pepe on the right and Mbolo up top. So yeah, definitely not a bad team. But if you look at our team on the right, there is no way we should be losing this game. This has to be a win. Let's get into it. Let's quick sim to see what result it's going to be. And it's a 3-2 loss. Well, that's not great. We have the second leg, of course. But, yeah. It did, did Shane Long score against us? Well, it's safe to say that it didn't go to play in the first leg. Hopefully, at home, we can get a win to get us into the next round. And what's the score going to be? It's a 1-0 win. Does that mean we're through? Yes, it is. Get in. Everton won on away goals. That is exactly what I wanted. 1-0. Of course, I'm an idiot. Of course, we scored two away goals. So, yeah, we're through to the next round. We did not make it easy for ourselves. So, yeah, in the next game, we're going to have to play a lot better. Well, it definitely does not get any easier. Juventus in the quarter final. Actually, looking at the team, they're not as good as I thought they would be. I mean, of course, Dybala is great. So is Arthur. But I genuinely think we have a chance of getting through to the next round. Let's see if that can happen. In the away leg, it is a 2-0 win. Get in. What a brilliant start to carry over to the second game. Let's see if we will be in the semi-final. Both of our centre-backs and Calvert-Lewin were tired going into this game, which does mean Moyes Keane, the former Juventus man, does start up top for us in this second leg. And despite the rotations, we're 2-0 up currently, so we should still be getting through. What's the score going to be? Oh my god, we actually lost. The two centre-backs cost us. Rotating the two centre-backs cost us. Holgate and Godfrey having absolute stinkers there. 4.6 and 5. Oh my god. We're out of the Champions League, guys. We're actually out of the Champions League. To be honest, I would have been surprised if we did get to semi-finals. Reaching the final was just simply delusional from the board. You could not write this. Manchester City first with 79 points. Everton second also on 79 points. The next game. Everton versus Manchester City. Whoever wins this game 
wins the Premier League title. I've not seen anything like this before in career mode. I mean, forget career mode. Football. I don't remember ever seeing this in football before, so it's a once-in-a-lifetime moment. We could be crowned Premier League champions. I was only going to play one live game at this video, being the Champions League final, but I just have to play this. I can't simulate this. That would be just ridiculous. Here's our team going into it. Pickford in goal, back four of John Joe Kenny, Long Lake, Keen and Montiel. Digne is unfortunately injured for this game. In midfield, we have Milinkovic, Savic, Allen and Vlasic, with Kukurea and Richarlison on the wings. And up front, it is, of course, Calvert-Lewin. I can't remember the last time I was this nervous going into a league game. I don't get nervous, but I'm starting to get a bit shaky, you know? I mean, I'm a little bit weird. In only our second season with Everton, Rafa Benitez has got Everton into a situation where winning a game means they win the Premier League. Honestly, the job Rafa's done here has been unbelievable. 1987 was the last time Everton won the league title. Will that change today? Let's get straight into it. When that... Lovely. Now Vlasic. Oh, I see Calvert-Lewin over the top. Oh, what a ball that is from Richarlison. Calvert-Lewin nods it down. Can he get past this man? Yes, he can. Calvert-Lewin near post and does get us a lead. And that goal well and truly could win us a league title. What a start here. Brilliant ball over. Calvert-Lewin uses his strength to get past this man and fires it in. What a start here at Goodison. Here's the Mobile. Oh, poor pass. De Bruyne on the ball now. We need to defend this well. Back to Sterling. Oh, fires it home. Just like that, five minutes later, Man City have scored the equaliser. Of course, Sterling being formerly of Liverpool, I'm sure he would absolutely love to get a win here. De Bruyne playing it through. Get that away, Longley. Get that away, Longley. Oh, Longley. Give me a heart attack there. Oh, lovely pass, Kenny. Beautiful. Now it's over the top into Vlasic. Vlasic is through. Vlasic. Finish this. Oh, he's close to the keeper. But it doesn't matter. Vlasic has got the second. What a game this has been so far. What a performance from the boys. Lovely play from the lads on the counter. And it's that man, Nikola Vlasic. What a signing he's been this season. Is now like 88 rated. And now he could be the man to win us the Premier League title. There's half time. Good performance so far. We need to make sure that we defend for our lives if we do want to come away with a title. Great performance so far. But we need to make sure that we play just as well in this second half. Let's go, lads. Rodri into Bernardo Silva through. Can he get it away? Have it. It's Bernardo Silva. Big tackle. Milinkovic Savic. Honestly, defensively, Savage has been absolutely impeccable. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but Cavalier Lewin now over the top. Oh my god, Richarlison's now through. Does he have an option? Yes, he does. Richarlison. Can he find him? Cavalier Lewin at the back post. Finish it first time. It's Milinkovic Savic, not Cavalier Lewin. Started the move, but cannot finish it. Really poor volley from the Serbian midfielder. Should have taken a touch, really. That's pretty much my fault. Oh, giving it away so cheap there. That's really poor. We need to make sure we concentrate in the second half. This is into Mares. We had Mares coming through. Poor tackle, but thankfully Mares can't find a city player. Mares on the edge is Kevin De Bruyne. Big tackle, Linkovic Savic. I'm just going to call him Sergey from now on because his name is too long. Aguero, good strike. Even better save. Come on, Pickford. Man City with a corner to get the equaliser here. And it's in. It's a good ball for Torres. Oh my god, what a header. What a header from Ferran Torres. And there you have it. Man City have equalised. Can't say it's undeserved. They have been good in the second half. Now the counter. Let's go. Richarlison. I see him running through. And what a pass that is into him. Now he needs options in the box. Richarlison. Does he have them? He does. At the back post is Kukurea. Can he get to him? Yes, he can. And there we go. 83 minutes in. Mark Kukurea, another signing, has possibly got the goal. To win us the Premier League title, what a game this has been. End-to-end -end stuff here. We get the lead, they equalise. We get the lead, they equalise. Finally, we've got the lead. Are they going to equalise this time? I pray that they don't. We've done it. Everton have won the Premier League in Rafa's second season in charge. What a game that was. 3-2. One of the most entertaining games I've actually played this FIFA. And although it was a very even game, I do think overall... We were the better side. It's going to be Alan to lift the trophy. I forgot to set the captain, but to be honest, he's one of the older players, so I don't mind too much. And there we have it. For the first time in 34 years, Everton are champions of England. So there's the first trophy of this rebuild. Now in season three, 
Let's win the Champions League. Well, what a way to end the season. First place in the league with 82 points. Let's see how well we did in the other competitions. Obviously, the Champions League didn't go to plan, but since we've won the Prem, I don't really mind too much. In the FA Cup, we did go a bit further than last season, but we did lose to Spurs in the quarterfinals. And in the Carabao Cup, we did lose the Merseyside Derby in round four. Here are the players with the most goals this season. Calvert-Lewin with 31 goals in 50 games, 24 of them coming in the league. He did miss out on the golden boot to Chiro Immobile of Man City. Then Nikola Vlasic, what a signing this guy's been. 25 goals and 12 assists in 51. He's returned to Goodison and has become one of their best players of all time. 88 races now and at 24, he can still grow even further. Then Richarlison had a really good campaign. 17 goals and 16 assists. And the most expensive Everton player Milinkovic Savic did have a decent campaign getting 9 goals and 5 assists in that centre mid position. Jeez, it's got to a point where we're spending 50 million on substitutes. Although I am sure this man is going to be a great super sub. And that man is Luis Diaz, the Colombian arrives for a hefty fee. But for the past two seasons, we've relied on Bernard and Iwobi if one of our wingers is tired. So now that problem's been solved. The 25-year-old has blistering pace, incredible dribbling. What a backup winger this guy's going to be. The first departure of this season is Ellis Sims going to Osasuna for 2.7 mil. I believe he was on loan at Blackpool but since returning he's been nowhere near the first team so yeah it's best that he's left. We've got to be ruthless at this point Michael Keane is 29 and one of the lowest rated players in our team so he has left to Roma for 40 million and now we're going to bring in another massive centre back signing. If we want to win the Champions League we have to go all out with our signings that's why we've brought in this lad. Jose Maria Jimenez has arrived for 75 million making him one of the most expensive defenders in the world but I'm sure he'll be worth every single penny. 87 rated look at those stats. 97 aggression yeah, it's fair to say you would not want to get in a fight with this guy. 94 jumping, 90 strength, 89 stand tackle, 89 defensive awareness, and 88 slide tackle. This guy is one of the best centre backs in the world, and he's now joined our team. You're that guy, pal. Trust me. You're that guy. And after that massive signing, we still have 110 million left in the bank. So I'm not sure what I'm going to spend it on. But I mean, when you have 100 mil, you got to spend it somehow. You know what I mean? Fuck it. We've bought one massacre. <laughs> oh my god. If we don't win the Champions League this year, we are actually a joke. 105 million for a right back. It, it, it's just ridiculous. Now, last season, Man United finished outside the top four, meaning they got Europa League football. And at 87 rated, this guy should not be playing Europa League football. He should be in the Champions League. And that's why he's joined a team who are favourites to win it this year. This is what the team looks like at the end of the transfer window. And I genuinely believe this team is one of the best in the world. So if we don't win the Champions League this season... This season will be counted as a failure. So now we've made the team even stronger. Let's see how well they're doing in January. As you'd expect, we are once again in the title race this season. Four points behind Manchester City. And how good would it be to win the Premier League back-to-back? -back? In the Champions League, we walk through the group stage getting 16 points out of six games. And in the round of 16, we do face Frankfurt. So not one of the worst teams to face, but we cannot underestimate them. We wiped the floor in the group stage. Now into the round of 16, we do face Frankfurt. On paper, our team is obviously much better, but we cannot underestimate this side. Last Last season we faced Munch and Glad back in the round of 16 and we only just beat them on away goal so yeah we gotta be on our game today first leg of the round of 16 we're gonna quick sim it and it is a 3-1 win confident stuff Calvert-Lewin with a brace and Vlasic with the goals great stuff let's head into the second leg right then second leg we're currently 3-1 up couple of rotations let's see what the result is and we do lose 2-1, but I think we do still go through. So yeah, we didn't breeze through, but we're in the quarterfinals, so that's all that matters. After getting a favourable draw in the last round, we get one of the toughest in the quarters, Real Madrid. One of the best sides in Europe. And they do, of course, have a very good team. Vinicius, Reynier and Rodrigo will all be great ratings. Then Valverde, Cruz, Casemiro. Yeah, it... It is a really good team, isn't it? But don't count us out. We're also very good as well. Calvert-Lewin is now 89 rated. So is Richarlison. And Vlasic and Savic are both 90 rated. So, yeah, we have a very good team. It's also very well-rounded. So let's get into the first leg. See what the result is. And we do get a 2-1 win. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant start. Campaign B with a red as well. So that will also be an advantage for us. So a very solid first game, but we don't have a great advantage. Real Madrid can easily win this and get through to the semis. But I am confident that we can pick up another win here. Everyone's fit. They're all ready, roaring to go. Let's see what the result's going to be. And it is a 0-0 draw. Get in. We're through. We stay solid at the back. And yes, we are going through to the semi-finals. What the f***? Is happening here? In the semi-finals, we take on the other side of Madrid, Atletico. And they do have a very good team. They have a brilliant striker in Jao Felix. Marcus Llorente and De La Cruz in midfield with Lodi and Upa Meccano at the back. And they also have, like, the best keeper in the world as well. So, yeah, it's going to be a very tough game. But let's put in a good performance. 
first leg, the score is a 1-0 loss. That's not terrible. We can bounce back from this, but they do have an away goal, so that's not ideal, but I reckon we can definitely pull this back. Right, they're not a great first leg, not getting any goals, but of course, if we just stay solid defensively and score two, we will go into the next round. Let's see if that can happen in this game. What is the score going to be? Are we through to the final? Yes, we are! 3-0, absolutely emphatic stuff. Richarlison, Calvert-Lewin, and Richarlison again in the second minute of the game. What a performance that was. I thought, I, I was so worried. I thought Madrid, well, Atletico Madrid that is, have a great side. This is going to be a tough game. But we have blown them out of the water in the second leg. 3-0, we're into the finals, baby. And the team we face in the final is Bayern Munich. They beat Barcelona 2-2 on aggregate. Let's see who else they beat. Uh, they beat Liverpool 3-1. Uh, and Inter Milan, 2-2 on away goals. And in the Premier League, where do we finish? Oh my god, we actually won. Yeah, there we go. We've won the Premier League back-to-back. -back. What an achievement that is. That is going to give us loads of confidence going into this final, knowing that we are currently the best team in England. So here are the best performers of Season 3. We actually have joint top scorers in Nikola Vlasic and Calvert-Lewin, both getting 32 goals. Also, with Charleston with 13 goals, 15 assists. In this series, he's been very good at racking up assists, which is a bit contrary to real life. I think in real life, he's seen as like a more selfish player. So, yeah, it's good to see that he's changed up his play style. Then Milinkovic Savic with 13 goals, 5 assists. Moiskin, our backup striker, getting 8 goals in very limited minutes. Then Kukurea getting 6 goals and 14 assists. As I said, he's not an out and out goal scorer, so we're not relying on him for goals. But 14 assists is very impressive. So this is it. The Champions League final against Bayern Munich. The moment that this rebuild has been leading up to. This is the side we have to face. If you're wondering why you can see the ratings, it's because I had to put in another controller. Because they were putting players in just the wrong position. Like Maguire was playing right back. Saul was playing centre back. It was just completely ridiculous. So yeah, I've had to change that. And as you can see, the sides do look very even. If not, our team looks better. As you can see, our whole defence is better apart from Pickford. And overall, our team is actually higher rated. So going into it, we are actually the favourites. But of course, this is still going to be a very tough game. They do have some great players, Combe and Navri on the wings. But with our insane defence, I'm confident that we can stop them. We've already asserted dominance in England, but can we do it in Europe as well? Let's find out. If you have enjoyed this rebuild, remember to smack that like button and also subscribe if you are new around here. But now, let's stop waffling and get straight into the Champions League final. Ball inside, get it away. Nice, it's out to Alfonso Davies though. Bayern have just been hogging the ball. Finally we get it back, but we lose it straight away. This has been a really poor start so far. And it's fallen to Fakir. Easy catch for Pickford. Allen into Calvert-Lewin. See Digne on the overlap. Digne, back to Kukurea. Kukure on the edge has a shot, but Gomez is in the way of it. Right, first corner. Can we get Calvert-Lewin on the end of this? Calvert-Lewin goes up and gets the header. And our first proper chance of the game has been converted by the big man up front, Calvert-Lewin. We know how good he is at headers. And he has converted from the corner to get us the lead in the biggest game of his career. Gretz got the ball, playing over the top into Kingsley Coleman. Puts in the ball. It's a good one at that. Thankfully, Lewandowski can't get to it. As is cleared away. And there's half time. A very even game so far. I do think Bayern have had the better chances. But we were able to get the lead through a towering header. As we go into the second half ahead. Ball over. Into Kingsley Coman. Now Amasaka needs to cover. Big tackle Aaron. He wins that ball back so much. We have a chance on the counter here. As we have Aaron, Aaron Amasaka on this right hand side. Amasaka trying to play it central. Into Savic. Now here is Richarlison. For the second of the day, cuts inside. Oh, what on earth was that finish? Yeah, it's blazed over. Maybe the nerves got to him. Richarlison. Richarlison wants. Richarlison gets. Richarlison. Second mark of the cherry here. As it's into him. Richarlison. Oh, beautiful dribbling. Beautiful finish. No. Richarlison's finishing today has not been good enough. He's left his shooting boots at home because he's done everything right today apart from his shooting. Now, why to Serge Nabry putting in a ball? They've been putting on a lot of balls, but they just have not been accurate enough. Poor clearance. Get that Jimenez. Oh, it's been put in. Oh, that's so jammy. I have no idea what happened there. Just could not get rid of the ball. And Coman has equalised. And now it's game on. Richardson, lovely turn. Put it over. He's on side. Richardson, what a lovely move this is. Richardson, finish up. Oh, no, 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 no. Richardson's finished. What is up with Richardson? 89 rated. He just can't shoot today. 
Honestly, he is absolutely crumbling under pressure. If only you could finish, we'd be like 3 1 up by now. Really poor from the Brazilian. Bayern coming forward now. Big tackle. Savage. Millie Savage. As now Diaz is released on this left hand side. Trying to poke it through into Calvert Lewin. As he has Savage behind him. Savage. Who do we have in support? We have Vlasic out wide now. Vlasic cutting in. Oh, he's got three star skills. I forgot. Wamasaka well, inside to Calvert Lewin. This could be the chance. Savage running through. Savage. Cutting inside onto his right foot. And he has the finish. Get in. 93rd minute. Literally the last kick of the game. And it has won the Champions League final. I didn't even realise it was this late on in the game. Absolute scenes at the Johan Cruyff Arena. As Savic does score one of the most iconic goals of all time. A 93rd minute winner in the biggest game in club football. And I think it was definitely deserved. We were the better team today. Bayern just weren't good enough attacking wise. But there we go, we've taken the lead, and we are now champions of Europe. One team crestfallen, the other jubilantly. Well, there's winners and there's always losers. Fine margins between the two. For these players, well, it's the night of their lives, and they're determined to enjoy every millisecond. Well, you have to enjoy it because it passes so quickly. Well, you just think how many games they've played this season as well. All that's in the past now. The game that's just happened was the most important one. The Champions League winners. And you can feel the emotion. And this is the moment, Derek, sharing it with the supporters. You get a chance to take it a little bit closer to those stands. Let them enjoy the experience with you. And the families are up there in the stands as well. A brilliant occasion. There we have it. The Champions League victors.